Yeah, good afternoon. Just uh, good weird. Afternoon. Uh, just first of all, I welcome you, Mr. Chen Han, the founder of yeah. Myanmar Professional Golf Association. How are you, Mr. Chen? Uh, yes, fine. Okay, so it's my pleasure to have you as guest of my today's show. Basically, as you all know, this is a live telecast going on to Facebook, YouTube, and other three channels like Twitter, LinkedIn, and also our website of golfbangladesh.com. So at a time, we are going live into these five channels. Today, as I already mentioned, I have a guest from Myanmar. He is none other than Mr. Chen Han. He is the brother of Mr. Chila Han and Ms. Toei. So Mr. Chen, my first question is to you. I find that you whole family is involved in golf. Toe was a promoter, was an organizer. Chila was a professional and also an organizer. And everybody of Asia knows you guys. So uh, you're younger, but also in golf, I heard. So you are a professional golf. You have been also a professional golfer. And then you run a, now you turn to a businessman and then you run an academy and you run a golf range. We said that you run pro shop. You run the first putting center in Myanmar. So a lot of passion for golf. Why it is so? Your whole family is involved in golf. Why? Well, well um, I guess it can, you can say because it was the time when my father was appointed as a military attache to Washington, D.C., USA. I must have been about eight, about eight years old, 10 years old. I mean, that was the era of uh, Nicholas Palmer and Gary Player, the big three. And so, you know, somehow just went, just got into golf. Well, my father was passionate about golf. He wasn't a professional. He's just a fun player, a uh, social player. But then, you know, um, got into it and followed him around. And uh, that's how we got introduced to the game. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. Yeah. So I find... So you have another younger brother who is also involved in golf? Yeah, my younger brother is also a pro, but he didn't play much on the tour. Yeah. And your son also is a professional golfer, if I'm not wrong? Uh, my son is not yet a professional golfer. And he is I, amateur. I, he was sent to, uh, yeah, he's an amateur. I sent him to school to the IMG Golf Academy in Florida. He was there for uh, three or four years. He's back. He's, he's in college now. And... Uh, well, unfortunately, everything's at standstill because of the uh, virus. But so he he is in USA. Line or what? That would depend on him. Yeah. So he's in USA. Uh, uh, he's back he, here now at the moment. Yeah. Okay. He he he, he has not played college golf he in was USA. In USA yeah. He was in academy, but not in college uh, not golf. Yet. Okay. Okay. That's no, great. No, he was not. He. He was, uh, he played a lot of uh, big amateur events and all that. So, you know, and did fairly well, yeah. Okay. So I find your record that you were the first founder, I mean, the founder of Myanmar Professional Golf Association, those who conduct the professional tournaments in Myanmar. To I, I'll ask a question on that later. But first tell me what you're doing now. What is your present activities and... You have been also in the junior golf, and what is the relation? I saw some pictures in uh, Google that you have a ordinary relation, extraordinary relation with Bijoy Singh. Where you been a coach of him, or what was the relation with him? Well, okay, uh, basically, yeah, I'm in the golf business now, guys. Uh, by circumstances, I, I was a resident pro in uh, Royal Johor Country Club in Malaysia, and my last position position was the again the resident pro in Penang Bukit Jumbo and um, it was in Johor that I uh, VJ rather VJ met me because uh, Chila he met Chila down in the Australian circuit and they came back together so the beginning days the first four or five years uh, when he was turning when he turned pro and was trying to get on the Asian tour were basically with me you know and uh, we, you know um, I saw him, he, he stayed with me. So basically, I can see how he became a, a top player, you know. Okay. Of yeah. course, at that so moment, he, nobody really, nobody really thought he was going to be in the Grand Hall of Fame, you know. But uh, I kind of thought that. 
uh, it is yeah so uh, tell me something now what else uh, you are doing now in Myanmar you are based in Myanmar I know what you are doing now uh, can you tell me in short what you are doing with golf well basically uh, I like uh, you mentioned earlier I set up the Myanmar PGA and it's all with a vision of trying to you know strengthen the golf or up, upscale the golf industry in Myanmar so along with that, you know, I, I'm now, our company is now distributing the top line clubs from Japan and the uh, U.S., which is a uh, Strixon and Titleist products. And um, aside from that, our, one of our main uh, uh, works is the academy, uh, the golf academy, basically uh, working with junior golfers. And, you know, uh, the present pros in Myanmar and all that basically came through our academy. Yep. Okay. Okay. So... Basically, you are busy with running an academy and also driving range and all. Uh, so you are the, as you said, if I understand you correctly, you are the representative of uh, which are the brands, Sixon and what else? In uh, Titleist, the U.S. Titleist, brand, Titleist. Yeah. A Titleist, yeah, Titleist, okay. Yeah, Titleist, so, Scotty Cameron, and all that stuff, yeah. Okay, great, great. So you are, were the founder member of uh, founder of PGA, Myanmar. So tell me what right. this PGA now doing. Uh, how many tournaments they are uh, conducting, and how many Asian tour do take place in Myanmar? Okay, um, basically it's a tough situation here in the sense that we lack uh, a lot of foreign investments up to now. So basically, we did have um, we did have a tour, a local tour, which had about up to five to eight events. Right now we have about five to six events yearly. And um, we have a smaller version of that. But unfortunately the Asian tour, which we had over 10 or 15 events over the years, uh, cause I started the PGA back in 1996, 95. So within those years, we were able to bring the uh, Asian tour event, uh, of course, with thanks to Chile, to our country. and. Uh, Basically, we had it going, but the last two years uh, we've been lacking sponsorship. So that's the situation at the moment. Okay, okay. So you now presently your professional golf association contact uh, five to seven or ten golf tournaments. I understood, and Asian tour is not happening uh, uh, for last two years. No Asian tour. Yeah, unfortunately, no. Okay, so I like got a, started getting. Like Okay, okay. I started basically getting uh, lack of uh, sponsorship. Yeah, yeah, basically lack of sponsorship. I understand. Yeah, it is uh, same in our country in Bangladesh also. Like BPJ, we have a professional association like you, uh, BPJ it calls. So, uh, though your association stands for Professional Golf Association Myanmar of Myanmar, am I correct? correct. Okay, correct. So, but our one is our one is Bangladesh Professional Golfers Association. So, the okay. same role, but then that is Golfers Association something like cooperative society still uh, they are running the tournaments professional tournaments but then um, it is also lacking sponsor like Myanmar so I'll come back to you uh, with my questions but let me read some comments from audience as our regular audience and they keeps on following me and whatever they see my face and the program they keeps on uh, throwing questions so let me read some of those uh, Mr. Jagabundu Rai, he wants to know she, uh, how many Asian tour you, uh, you play. What do you, does he mean? How many Asian tour you played? How many golf courses in Myanmar? Or your start of golf? Okay, let's go with this three one. Then I'll go later. How did you start your golf? And how many golf courses are there in Myanmar? And did you play any Asian tour? Three questions together. We have played Asian tour for about ten years, I guess, because uh, together with Chila, I went around, but. You know, uh, I don't want to go into details, but circumstances uh, had me uh, move into the business side of it. Basically, I, I, I was, I, we needed a place to uh, practice and stay outside, and that's why I took up the resident pro job. Not because I, I wanted to be a resident pro. I didn't. I wasn't interested in teaching at that moment. At that time, yeah. I was interested in playing only. But you know, it was, uh, it was those times. So uh, that that's the situation that I. That I went in. In terms of uh, golf in Myanmar, I think the history is very deep here. Uh, I think we're one of the first countries around Southeast Asia that 
that basically played golf, you know, on a national level, you know, because saying that we have over nearly 100 courses and, you know, that's a shocker because a lot of people don't, don't really, you know, say, wow, I mean, they don't think we have 100 courses. Well, we, but saying that again, international standard courses, we only have a, a few of them. And the latest uh, courses is in, uh, we have is the Pun Line Golf Course, which is signature by Gary Player. This was uh, this, this started way back a couple of nearly 10, 10 years ago. But the latest one is the Gong Golf Club. And uh, that's about it. Uh, but we have a lot of beautiful courses that if we uh, have investments, renovations could be done, you would come up with a lot of good links. Yeah. So is it more than hundreds number of golf courses? Yeah. More than 100. And we have uh, two or three that are nearly 100 years old. Uh, okay. The popular one would be the Yangon Golf and Golf Club, you know, which is, which has, uh, which celebrated the hundred years or uh, two, three years back. Okay. So, what's about your start of golf? Somebody wanted to know when did you start playing golf and uh, started uh, your career with golf? Like you have been a renowned professional uh, golf pro, and also you have started business. So, tell us your start with golf. Okay, I mean, to cut, to make it short, basically golf, I started because, like I said, my dad was playing it and we were in the, I guess. The year, I mean, how many years? years? You told that, but uh, how was, many years? Yeah, this was back in 64, 65, you know, like we were in U.S. and we, we started way back then, you know, I mean, my father. So you were senior to Chila? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, I see. But we, I thought that you were younger than Chila. So for our audience, somebody asks a question. He's the brother of Chilahan and Girl. also he's the elder brother and also elder brother of uh, Miss Toye. So he, they know them. So yes. they started asking. Uh, okay. So now I got the point. So he, it is long, long time. You played before Chilahan. That time there was yes. no Asian tour. It was just still Asian still, circuit yeah, maybe. Still very young. Uh, yeah. Uh, now I yeah, understand. But you look, uh, you look also very young. Well, because of a uh, memoir, I guess, you know, things are really... Uh, Healthy the air is fresh. I guess that's all I can say. It is. It is. And it I'm, is. Well, has I, to be. I guess the main thing is because I'm doing what I love, and um, I'm in, you know I'm in the right environment, and that keeps me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. It speaks. It speaks. Yeah. Your your whole family is with golf, and the tremendous passion that I'm seeing that's made me interested to know about you. You people are uh, contributing for golf for a long, long time. Okay. So. Other questions somebody wanted to know uh, what is that? Uh, how many domestic tours you've answered? More than uh, around 10. And yeah. then, uh, uh, present status he is a prof businessman basically now. So, your whole family may be hearing our discussion. He has wrote, he wrote, uh, do you have tightly you answered tightlist Nike, TaylorMade, or oh, you are the representative oh, no. of tightlist, tightlist, and friction, and friction, yeah, yeah, friction, yeah. not the Nike and TaylorMade, yeah. No so way. do we have, the, uh, but in Myanmar, I think all the brands are there then. Well, yeah, Nike and uh, TaylorMade's in, Mizuno in, uh, Maruman. So okay. we've got uh, uh, distributorships here down on that. So that was, again, something that just started, you know, a couple of years back. Because when I first came back, there was hardly any setup here. You know, there was no PGA, people just... The, the young players, the big players were just playing amateur golf. So that's that was that's why I came back here and I I said, well, uh, I think we should do something about this. So that's how I got started into uh, the Myanmar PG in, in here, you know, basically. I see. So uh, yeah, somebody wanted to know, still are you coaching? Uh, did you visit Bangladesh? Anytime. Did you visit Bangladesh? Or, uh, these two questions. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. And I wanted okay. to play there uh, as a player, you know. And um, yeah, I know Sidi Maybe we're not. He doesn't know me that well, but uh, I, I probably we know each other in terms of that. And um, I was quite surprised that you know, I me. Mean, you got a player that's a top class, top quality player, you know. And that's that's a big uh, plus for the our countries like ours, you know. Uh, of course, you, you are a pro, uh, golf pro now, as you're running academy and also driving range, 
Frost. Somebody wanted to say answer on behalf for you. He is now right now doing business with golf, and golf is running golf. What is the name of your golf academy, by the way? Uh, so that under our, my you know? family, under my under our family name, Han Golf Masters. So Han Golf Han Academy. Golf. Yeah. Han Golf. Yeah. H A N Han. Yeah. So it's your family name, Han Golf Academy. Yeah, I see. Actually, so, you know, I mean, I, I got into the golf business actually by, not actually, uh, I, I didn't really plan on it. You know, I was, I, was, I was very keen to play and all that. But as I came back to Myanmar, there were a lot of things that were needed to be set up. And so one thing led to another. And, I, you know, I, I told Chila, I said, I'll go back a few years and set up the PGA and I'll probably back out, do whatever we need to. But then, you know, one thing led to another and uh, here I am. 20, 25 years yeah. still in memory yeah. and uh, happy about that decision. <laughs> okay. So uh, by seeing the qu one question here, I want to know how many maybe professional golfers are there in Myanmar? Yeah, we got uh, close to about maybe 60, 70,000, you know. And uh, well, because- Number of professional golfers. Uh, not professional. Professional, I, I started with a group of 16. Now we're about nearly 78, 70, 80 professional golfers. 100, okay. But uh, uh, nearing, unfortunately, 100. we only have a handful playing outside. Okay. So that's that's been our shortcoming, I guess. Yes. Uh, in Asian tour level, I don't uh, really I find anyone, but merely, I mean, uh, very occasionally. Do you have anyone playing in the Asian tour level now? Yeah, uh, actually, you know, we had one, uh, Yete Aung, who was playing regularly on the tour. And um, I put a lot of hope in one of our new players. Uh, his name is uh, Hain Sidhu Harry, in short. Big guy, big young boy, a lot of potential. Uh, I think and I think he qualified like uh, third position in the qualifying school. And uh, maybe we could, we could see some... Uh, some fireworks from him <laughs> to get our Myanmar golf going. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I've got some a uh, few other audience join us now. Mr. Bijay Divakaran, Divakaran, stories of your past with Bijay Singh in Malaysia. He wants to know the stories. And I find Toy also joined. Hi, brother Chen. So tell me about your story of past with Mr. Bijay Singh in Malaysia. Well, I got a lot of stories in Malaysia, but okay, VJ could write. A, I, wrote, I could write a couple of books on my stories in Malaysia. But then, you know, uh, as golf, as golf would be, uh, I was fortunate that golf, you know, allowed me to be with the royalties and the generals, and um, and you know, uh, again, meeting VJ. You know, VJ in his infant pro years when he was just nothing, like when he first came around, he was just shooting an average. Uh, he was an average player. I, I didn't see him as a he wasn't really like, you know, blasting under par scores. But one thing he had was a super work ethics that up to now, you know what I mean? And I wasn't surprised when Tiger said, hey, probably he, he practiced, BJ practices more than Tiger because I seen him myself, you know. And um, he, we were together and, you know, I ran a driving range. I was a head pro at that Royal Johor. And, and the kind of a joke it was that he, he he hit all the balls down at the range and you know, he was up at four or five in the morning hitting until the evening and I remember I mentioned to Chila that hey man the, this this kid this work ethic's good and that you know he probably won the masters one day you know and of course that time it was like a bit of a joke you know but not to me I, I, I thought shit man this guy because I believed in uh, work ethics actually players could be very talented but I believe that it all boils down to the heart and the, you know, work ethics. And VJ had that. V and if people ask me what I taught him, uh, you know, I didn't teach him anything technical, but I taught him what my father taught me, which was a lot of discipline, you know, and the belief that you can be anybody, you can be one of the best. I told him, hey, you can be a world-class player. And my friends used to tell me, hey, don't put the wrong ideas on the kid, you know, <laughs> he might go crazy. <laughs> But, you know, yeah. BJ worked hard. He worked hard. He he took that uh, 200 percent, more than 100 percent. And he and he, you know, he still I heard from what I know, he's still doing it today. So I'm not surprised for all the success that he got. You know, he, he deserved any penny of it. And he, he's 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 a great uh, what you call a great disciplined guy.
he works hard yeah great to learn all this yeah Bijoy has already owned some masters i wish by this time uh, if i'm not wrong yeah yeah, yeah. well you know yeah. Uh, in 1992 we played, played the malaysian open in my course penang and i to ask him at that time i said why aren't you going to states you know why don't you want to go to why don't you go states up and he said chan do you think i'm ready i said well i personally think you're ready but he goes if i go i want to win i don't want to just go and play you know and then you know it would be that his first tournament he won in U.S. So it was one of those stories, you know, and uh, it, I guess that's part of the highlights of my life that I look back and I'll be happy. But I mean, I got champions going through my, and I got my brother, Chila, who's the top Asian player. And uh, mm -hmm. and I had BJ, you know, who's a Hall of Famer. Who would ever thought BJ would have been a Hall of Famer? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, can I, uh, am I correct in knowing BJ is from uh, now, which, which nationality is from? Earlier he was from, uh, from Fiji, Fijian. Fiji, Fiji, yeah. Uh, Fiji. He was Fijian and now still he's from Fiji, yeah. Fiji, yeah. Fiji, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, now I can remember, yeah. So what's about, uh, Chilahan also was very, I mean, young then, and he was also number one of Asia, once that this Bijoy was going with full gun. Yeah, you know, uh, kind of went different directions since uh, VJ again, due to circumstances, leapfrogged into the U.S. tour, you know, from Europe to U.S. And uh, Chila played, uh, Chila was actually playing tours all over the world, you know, and uh, probably was one of the first cosmopolitan pros, if you can call it. He played in Japan, Australia, Europe, U.S., you know, and that was one of our, uh, my father plans, I wanted him to play everywhere. And then, uh, you know, one year just said, hey, you better uh, buy, uh, tie down yourself to one circuit, and, you know, to do what you need to do so he did that in 99 and won the asian order of merit yeah that's great a lot of other uh, audience uh, have joined now um, uh, he's mr mayant ang who is your i mean favorite player of all time and at the moment who's the what uh, your Sorry, favorite player your favorite, favorite player, player. Yeah. yeah well I was, uh, I modeled myself after Gary Player, basically, because I figure we're the same uh, structure, you know? I mean, no point if I could look at the six six foot tall guy, but then Gary Player was more of our height, our age. And the best thing I liked about him was, that, actually I read into his story and all that, it's basically the mental side of it. I think Gary Player was a very strong mental discipline guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like to mention other few audience, those who joined. I already told about Mr. Bijoy Diva Karan, and then Mr. Rajol Kurim has joined, Mr. Sanjay Marak has joined, Mr. Rafael Angle have joined, and I also told about Mr. Mayan Ang. So uh, now I like to fall back to your Myanmar. Uh, as I understand, and I am also involved for the last 15 years with professional golf. You had been the founder of Professional Golf Association of Myanmar. Now tell me uh, about your professional golf structure. Like you lack like sponsor, as you said, we also do. But um, how do you find this Myanmar professional golf, uh, future of Myanmar professional golf? Well, you know, I, I guess uh, you're very right on that. Your country and mine were very similar in that situation is that, that I'm sure you got a lot of local talents. You know, we got a lot of local talents also. But, you know, for them to go that next step, they need to play outside. And that involves a bit of... Uh, financial uh, support, you know, and uh, this is the angle that we're missing a little bit. So we're not able to get enough financial support for our top players to go out. And of course, uh, at the same time, trying to get the players to understand that they, have, they should go out and, you know, try to be a better player and all that. It's uh, for my brother and I, the case was different, you know, because we went out, you know, because we, we, we had confidence and we, we went out. We didn't have that much money either, you know, but we just went out and we, we thought we could do it. And, it, you know, it, that was it. That was it. So the boys, the kids, the young players nowadays needs to be a little bit more, uh, I would use the word adventurous, you know, and then uh, get out there and give it a shot. You know, like one of the things that uh, Sheila, I always told him was, hey, go ahead and do whatever you need to do because uh, I have a base in Johor and I, I was a resident pro, so I was earning some good money. So I said, just do it. So come back, you know, we can always support back again. So that's where he started playing really 
around the world. You know, I started going to Australia and then to Europe and all that. And I think that that made him that better player that he was. Yeah. I see. Yeah, because why I'm interested to know about you, Myanmar golf. Because whenever I go outside Bangladesh and doing some rules, uh, I mean, officiating rule as the rules officials, I've I heard your name because you have so many golf courses, so many infrastructure, good infrastructures, uh, international standard. Uh, now, one thing I must say that like Chilahan was the driver who turned around the golf in Asia. He formed the Asian Tour. Your sister, Miss Toye, has been has had been also a uh, I mean factor, de factor in moving Asian Tour forward. Like she brought Asian development to, to Bangladesh and Chilahan was involved in bringing Asian Tour to Bangladesh. And I was also personally involved. I know both of them very closely and had been seeing for a long time. So why your this kind of family is not able to bring Myanmar golf to a state like Asian Tour? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, like, uh, yeah, my sister, Choi, she was very involved in it. She was a really good, uh, let's say, pusher. Of course, she pushed a lot to do a lot of things. And, you know, um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I was a bit tied up with uh, trying to do too many things, I guess, trying to develop the industry, try to, you know, upscale the industry as well and trying to get things done down here. And Sheila was busy up in uh, outside trying to do the Asian tour. So we, I think, uh, then I said, uh, the main thing, like I was mentioning was, you know, we were not able to get the step outside onto the Asian tour. A lot of players uh, showed a lot of tremendous potential, but uh, unfortunately, we you know we, we lost these top players uh, going into the next step. You know, so that's that's the structure we need to do. Not only have local tournaments, local tournaments, yeah, but then you got to lay down that bridge for them to take that step outside. So uh, I'm keen to do that. My my vision has always has been to you know upgrade the golf industry and all that on all aspects yeah great so you are really a senior man uh, with a lot of experience in golf as i understand and i saw your record you are involved for a long time long long time so tell me now something about myanmar how, how about its industry a uh, golf industry and tourism are golf is uh, placing or uh, can is able to contribute to the tourism of myanmar well, you know, like I said, the one thing that happened was like, as the game of golf evolved in Asia and Southeast Asia as well, right? And then everybody started doing, I mean, if you look at the golf courses, you now we had hundreds of courses, we had golf, uh, deep golf history. Vietnam never even really had a golf course yet. And, you know, and so, so as the other, uh, even in Thailand, there wasn't that many courses. But then, you know, it just, they went on a boom because, you know, uh, basically it's an investment structure there. You know, now Vietnam is posting over 50 to nearly 100 courses. And, you know, we, we were kind of like so-called left behind in that stage, you know, unfortunately. And um, so what I'm trying to get at is there's a lot of potential for it here. And if you look at it, the golf tourism and all that, yeah, we've got a golf course almost in every region. You know, and uh, Myanmar has a very, what you call the... The weather here, the, you know, it's and it, it, the seasons here is it's quite diverse. We got we got the cold, we got the hot. We, we even have places where it snows, you know. So um, there's a lot of potential here, you know. You know, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we the country's still on its stepping stones, and you know that we'll wait for that because I think the golf boom will hit Myanmar soon, if not sooner. Yeah, I, I also understand. I also support your points. Uh, someone wanted to know about golf course. It is there. He already answered. It is uh, more than hundreds. And Toye uh, wrote, lack of sponsor is also a factor to support the players in Myanmar. So, yeah, it is. Uh, how do you, I mean, why it is lacking? In Bangladesh also, we are trying to find out the reason why you cannot produce next Siddhikur and why we cannot attract sponsors, investors. So what is your opinion that why uh, we cannot ac uh, attract sponsors to golf? Well, you know, um, I don't want to get into the politics, <laughs> but then it does have a little bit on it because it's, you know, 
investments one issue and the government's uh what you call a uh, uh what, what i would say is government ability to attract the, uh, sp- uh investors and all that that would create the sponsorships and uh that's been a tough step for the our country you know and uh, i'm sure that's a a very similar situation for yourselves as well in bangladesh and you know and um i for me i i see a good future you know and I, i'm always the optimistic guy <laughs> so i'm i'm looking at yeah things can be done and you know and uh, it will happen but you know like it's just it's just a matter of time and uh, it will be sooner than what many people think cuz things will get into order and things will move Uh, I see. I see. So yeah, government has to support. We understand our big Asian tour events, though are sponsored by private investor, private sponsors, companies. Like now, it is uh, it is being uh, sponsored by a bank. So you had been having a big sponsor, I know. So yeah, for flourishing golf, professional golf, governments, Ashland, like sports ministry and tourism ministry, should come forward. Otherwise, it is really challenging for only golf association to move forward to. attract the investors or sponsors yeah, I, i go with your point so yeah, well, can exactly. you yeah go yeah on. sorry if i may add you know if you look at thailand i think the tourism authority of thailand is always back to all sports there and you know golf as well so that's a big big backup you know you, you need a tank at the back to go forward you know and we are not able to do that you know and uh, our even our tourism industry is here but then to go into you know the golf tourism there is still a very infant thing here so that's that's the catch here and uh, on a governmental policy issue again not not the political but to say so you know they they need to support the sports to go to that next level yeah uh yes uh, so yeah for the if you can uh, we are almost at the end of our show uh so can you give us some advice like from your log experience for our professional golfers what they should do and also for our organizers how we should move forward to bring more investment in golf in two field i want your advice yeah number one thing like i said it's all has to be sponsorship and um like what you're doing now is actually great cuz like you're getting you know you're getting on the world stage you know and then uh, that that should you know uh encourage lot of sponsors to come into uh whatever they need and you know uh definitely at this stage both yourselves your country and my country in terms of golf and sports yeah we need the governmental help as a lot you know and i think uh that has to be a what you call a, a very strong issue that we need to bring up with the authorities you know and uh that's if you get that the rest would follow in you know i basically said if you want better players the theory is quite simple as I kind of worked it out VJ you 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 have to play or you do other things right now we have pros that are what I call moonlight pros this is a this like a joke moonlighting meaning you play the tour then you you go into teaching and that's tough and they have to do that cuz of circumstances they don't earn enough on the local tour so they to survive they have to teach and that's that's a downside because you'll never make it like that you can't do two things i found out the hard way <laughs> i thought i could do it too but i was uh i was pushed into it by circumstances so i never i told chila don't ever change you just play you practice you play and you keep going and you know and there it is you know that's the uh, the theories right there and i developed a lot of players here who got to a very uh, top level and basically it's just a one sided thing you can't be teaching and playing at the same time so you've got to create enough tournaments on the local scene that you know basically the theory is like 12 tournaments just like taking a paycheck at the end of the month and if they can keep playing on that and keep going you would get players who are what what I call the complete total players these guys have to play only tournaments and if you can create that at situation the atmosphere you're going to come out with really strong players that's that's basically my theory on you know creating top players yeah yeah so maybe connectivity is a issue now has getting uh, i mean your picture is getting blurred at times okay can you hear me now yeah i can clearly okay i got okay. it yeah. so uh, yeah so for uh, 
how i mean your players professional players from myanmar to domestic tour do they get any chance to play regional tour like indonesian tour or malaysian tour or singapore tour and then go to asia asian tour or straight away they go from domestic tour to asian circuit is there in between any oh, yeah, regional that, that would be the obvious stepping stone you know but uh, again for to get the financial support and for him to have the game at that level you know he needs to have like i said a very strong local tour which at least dishes out 12 tournaments that they can play full time throughout the year so you need a player who's playing full time you need a pro a tournament pro as a tournament pro come on even in the us tiger and they, they don't teach they just play the tour and that's why you know again they're good because of, that's what it is and that formula has to be you know what you call uh, brought out uh, in countries like ours that's our main issue because i'm sure your pro is doing the same thing they they're playing a tournament and they're probably going to teaching or doing some other things you know fixing our pros do they're fixing motorcycles working at a workshop or mostly mostly of course teaching you know they're going to teaching so it's it's tough you know you, you can't have a guy who's doing teaching and playing at the same time you're not going to get that level of player especially nowadays when other players are so much better you know it is it is so someone has written uh, what can, what is about bringing visa sing over to myanmar to assist in developing players there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it is written by Bijay Dibakaran. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, well, yeah, you know, I mean, the, you're saying that the players assisting in what? What way? Sorry. Yeah, he, he development of player in Myanmar. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. What would you like? He to wanted know? to know to bring Bijay Singh. Well, yeah, that is was it his play, you know, but yeah. BJ is the, one of the top players. Now he has a bit more time. I'm in touch with him, you know, and uh, Chila is in touch with him. I met him recently about a year, about two years back. But anyway, yeah, he's, he's willing to come over here. But the thing is, the timing, you know, he, he's such a, what you call, a, you can put there, crazy tournament player. He just wants to play tournaments, you know. <laughs> he's almost full, full schedule playing, even at this age, you know. So... Giving uh, for him to give time to come over to Asia and all that—that's that's a catch here. Yeah, I think that would be great if you want to say BJ could do a tour through Myanmar, then to Bangladesh, and you know that would be a great help to the Southeast Asian. Uh, and I, I'll mention that to BJ as well. <laughs> so thank you very much. If you have anything to say for the last time, we we'll, we are at the end of the show. If you can tell me us your experience, your anything left you want to say. Well, basically, like I said, uh, I want to summarize that if you're looking to produce good players, the trick has to be in having a local tour that's strong enough to support financially players who are going to play full time. If you get players playing full time, you will get players who are going to come on strong. The guys that are playing on the Asian tours, where the PGA Tour, US, and all that, they're full time players. They don't do other things, you know, they just play. But, and, you know, without. Uh, some some of us don't realize that that's what's happening in a lot of our countries. Like our place are not playing full time, so you, it's hard to get top place. So that that would be my uh, my touch for countries like yourselves and ours and all that. Get a strong local tour, make sure they get earn their keep every month, and then you'll have a guy. You have a young player who just goes, okay, I'm just gonna play, practice, play again end of the month, pick up your salary, and you know keep going. That's the way it has to be. Yes, it Quite is. It is <laughs> yeah, yes. Wonderful, wonderful words uh, today uh, told us uh, about your career and also the development of golf and also sports industry. I mean, golf industry. So, yeah, Mr. Uh, last week wrote that, yeah, it is the commitment of the player also is very important. And, but oh, yeah. the key is, but the key is financial support. In Bangladesh right. also, we also believe that, that for the reason that I am hosting this episodes one after another for last eight almost 80 uh, episodes i have done today you'll be 79 and tonight also i've got a ex-minister and running mp member of parliament he himself is from a sponsor group so i uh, asked the same question to him why sponsors are not coming to support our golf our reason is also to stand beside the professional golf and our uh, 
those are from really humble background from humble background so with this word if you allow me i like to finish if you say anything else we'll, i'll finish here well um thank you for having me on the program uh, i i think you're doing a great job you know in, in terms of uh popularizing the sport for your country as well and you know uh thanks for having us and uh, giving me the chance to talk about myanmar golf yeah of course it is pleasure it is required because if people like you if you don't come forward and uh, talk on golf and golf will not spread people like you little like you uh, dedicated people like you passionate like you must speak and must be given chance to talk about golf thank you very much it was honor delight and a pleasure to talk to you mr Chen. thank you it's an honor for myself also thank you very much good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon i end here